Hello and welcome. In this lesson, we will compare the usage of the local and global size functions in the ANSYS Fluent Meshing Watertight Geometry Workflow. The local size functions are part of the Add Local Sizing task, while the global size functions are prescribed at the Generate the Surface Mesh stage of the workflow. The curvature and proximity size functions are common between both global and local settings, and therefore are going to be our primary focus in this video. There are other additional local size controls, such as the body sizing, phase of influence, and body of influence. They are not going to be affected by the surface mesh global size control settings, and therefore will not be discussing them in this video. Are you excited to take a deeper dive? Let's go! Let's launch a new instance of Fluent Meshing in double precision. We will use the drop-down menu to select the watertight geometry workflow. Since we are going to import a CAD file, let us click on the three dots to select the electronicsbox.scdoc file. If we hide the fluid enclosure walls, we see two capacitor and heat sinks integrated into the printed circuit board. Change the answer to the question, would you like to add local sizing, to yes. It is crucial to remember that the purpose of adding a local sizing is to refine the selected geometric entities or regions. Change the size control type to Curvature, select the label Wall Capacitor 2, as highlighted. Change the local main size to 0.03 mm and max size to 1 mm. Set the curvature normal angle to 10 degrees and leave the scope to field to its default setting phases. Fluent meshing will divide the curved surface of the cylindrical capacitor into approximately 36 division in the tangential direction along the surface. Click on Add Local Sizing option to complete this step. Apart from recovering the curvature, it is necessary to emphasize the importance of capturing the regions with thin gaps or solid structures in the CAD geometry, as seen here in the heat sink fins. Care must be taken to sufficiently resolve these proximity regions of the domain, if any, before generating the volume mesh. It is also important to understand that the generated mesh with proximity sizing controls may be computationally expensive. With this point in mind, let us add the proximity local control here. Select the walls heat sink tool label and use the same min and max sizes as previously done for the curvature setting. Change the cells per gap to 3 and leave the scope to setting to faces. Let's hit the Add Local Sizing button at the bottom and move to the Generate the Surface Mesh task. To compare the local curvature and proximity settings with the global, we will use the curvature and proximity size control, although the parameters that control the global size functions are the same as the local. It is important to understand that these settings are applied globally on all surfaces of the CAD, except on those entities where we have prescribed local size controls, wall capacitor 2 and wall heat sink 2, to obtain a finer mesh. Here it is important to recall two learnings. One, in fluent meshing the small sizes always take precedence over the larger sizes irrespective of whether they are local or global controls. And two, it is always a best practice to employ the local controls for refining the mesh for selected CAD entities, surfaces or bodies, and global size controls can be used to generate a coarser mesh on all other surfaces. To illustrate this, let us change the minimum size to 0.3 mm and leave the maximum size to its default value. We will also leave the curvature normal angle and cells per gap settings 
to their default values. Much like our local size controls, we will change the scope proximity to option to faces and hit the generate the surface mesh button to generate the mesh. If we hide the enclosure walls to see the electronics board, we find that the surface meshes on components where we apply the local curvature and proximity settings are much more resolved than their counterparts. The element sizing is much smaller on the second capacitor because we specified a normal angle of 10 degrees. The fin thickness is also better resolved on heatsink 2 compared to the adjacent one. Since we did not have local proximity control for the PCB, its thickness is being resolved by one single element because of our global size functions, which is not a recommended practice. To rectify these issues, we will add local sizing controls to remaining capacitor, heat sink and PCB walls. Click on the Curvature 1 task and hit the Revert and Edit button as shown. We will add the curvature size control to both the capacitors and hit update. Similarly, select both the heat sink as well as the PCB walls to add the local proximity control and hit update. Now we are ready to generate the surface mesh again. Let's call it mesh1. We will continue with the workflow and use most of the default options to generate the volume mesh as shown. To illustrate the importance of this local sizing, we will generate a similar mesh using just the global size function. This time, we will delete the curvature and proximity local size controls by right-clicking on them and selecting the Delete option. Under Generate the Surface Mesh, we will use the same local curvature and proximity sizing controls that we used earlier and generate the surface mesh. Let's call it Mesh2. We will use the same steps as a line earlier to generate the corresponding volume mesh. Let us compare the generated surface and volume meshes with the earlier meshes side by side. Mesh1 on the left with local sizing and Mesh2 on the right with just global sizing. Upon inspecting the two surface meshes, we find that all components on the electronics board, including the PCB, are wireless old. However, as we used final global size functions in Mesh 2, we noticed that the inlet, outlet and enclosure walls are much more refined than Mesh 1 on the left. The two volume meshes are also compared side by side, and the cell count in Mesh 2 is nearly 1.7 times that in Mesh 1. Notice how fine the volume mesh is in the interior regions of the domain compared to Mesh 1. It is important to understand that the obtained surface and volume mesh refinements may not be desirable as excessive refinement will require additional computational resources, not only in the meshing stage, but also while solving the model. In summary, it is recommended to always rely on the appropriate local sizing to generate a surface mesh with the desired refinement. To this end, if a refined mesh is required at the inlet and outlet surfaces only, and not the enclosure walls, we can make use of another local sizing control, the face sizing. The face sizing control can 
also be locally applied to one or more faces to generate a refined surface mesh on these selected boundaries. If a coarser mesh is desired on the enclosure surfaces or, in general, surfaces that are relatively farther away from regions that required a refined mesh to capture flow physics, it is important to remember that the global size functions can be used to generate this coarser mesh on such surfaces. This brings us to the end of our lesson.